You think you are free. That your decisions are your own. Tell me honestly, did you really choose this path? Or was it chosen for you? Your father, with every triumph, every failure. Was it not his decisions that brought you here? Has his path not sealed your own? Marked out in golden bricks below your very feet. The path is set. Keep your head up. Keep your weapon loaded. Follow the battle brick road. Хочу покажу, как каждый спортсмен поднимает логлит. Покажи. Можем, можем начать с Терекса. Ну давай, пойдем в стену, давай. А, блядь, что раз сейчас идем. Hello. Okay. So I'm starting the stream a few minutes before the hour because at the hour we are scheduled to have a guest. And I told him, you know, I'm going to start the stream a few minutes early and pop in when he's ready. Hopefully I won't be so distracted that I don't see him pop in. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being here. Um, uh, what are we going to do? Oh, the whole reason to start the stream early is to open a, a, a package. There we go. So let's see. Flip to the camera. Get this right. Uh oh, why the button's not working? Oh, no. Ah. Hey, there we are. Okay, so first one. This is from the LCS, and I believe it should have something indie in it, which would be good. And uh, Oh, Mo Biggs was here earlier. I should honor him with a quick little, he says, hail to the chat. Don't know if he's here now. And uh, scheduled for 11 p.m. Eastern, and he says, cool. All right. So this is always the good gamble. Oh, you know what? It's dark. It's dark and it's yellow. Let's try... There we go. Confuse my camera. <clears throat> so we do have a guest scheduled for later. I hope uh, that all works out. Great. Now I now I have that C seventeen song in my in my head. But the, the title of that song, by the way, is the formula for morphine. So if you go down in the description, you will see links to where to get it on Bandcamp. And that's all that John asked me to do was give a link. I told him I would just use a little bit of his music, and he said, oh, use what you want, or something similar. So I keep getting copyright struck by CD Baby because they're managing his copyrights, and they say it doesn't actually affect me, so I'm just not fighting it. Oops. The hands may be stronger. Hey! All right, and being from the LCS, of course, there's a, uh, yeah, I got to take care of that. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I was looking at the playback. The playback for my my uh, rollback is like way behind. So there we go. I don't know why people like all these noises, but they do. What? Why? I don't know. Three inch pieces of tape, three and a half, whatever. Okay. Pardon me a moment. Ha 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 ha. Get rid of that. Uh oh, he's here. He's early. He's four minutes early. Hey, Eric. It's okay to be early, right? Sure. Let's see what indie stuff the. Um... By the way, did you bring a book for later? Did I bring a book? Yeah, I don't know if I sent you that. I mean, I, I got something in the mail today, so. Hey, if you feel like opening it, we can do that. Sounds good. Um. The, I, I think I forgot to tell you that um, if you wanted to bring an indie book to show off at the end and talk about, that's uh, perfectly welcome. So. I can do that. Cool. And how you been? Busy. Very busy. <laughs> but good. I have to admit, um, I'm nervous not like I normally am right now. I'm nervous in the sense of don't make an ass of yourself again in front of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's anyway. happened once. That's all, that's enough. Yeah, it's yeah. enough. No, I, I don't even remember when it was. I just know it has to have happened. So, <laughs> I'm Gary keeping Sh score. Don't don't you worry, Gary Shipman. I like his art. It's very good. Yeah, he's skilled. And then we have uh, Boom Studios putting out Berserk. Er, this feels thick. Oh, I have not seen the previews on this one. Hmm. I haven't seen any of it. I'm not, I haven't picked it up. All right. So do I do it this way? There we go. So if you feel like opening your thing, we can do that. Go right ahead. I got this independent book today. What's that? Oh. And how do I make you bigger like this? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Cool. It's got trading cards and a bookmark and this is a sticker and I think there's a sticker in there too somewhere nice have you looked at it yet no I haven't actually I unpacked it but I, I didn't even take it out of the sleeve yet out of the uh, bag and board man Mo is already on my case broken too electric boogaloo <laughs> What is this word here? Chung? It's a good sound effect. I might have to yeah. use that. Yeah. Now, hang on a second. Is that signed? That's printed. His name is printed. His signature is printed, it looks like, in the blue. Yeah, it does. It does look it. It doesn't seem to glare this uh, differently from the paper. Yeah. I saw somebody post, I don't know who it was, but I saw somebody post some uh, uh, screenshots, some photos of the of the page, and I noticed uh, there's a couple lettering fixes that I would have happily have made Kenneth Roquefort. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. My son's watch, for some reason, is going off. Give me a sec. All right, so just real briefly, we can take a look at this. We got more sound effects, of course. Who is the artist on this one? Uh, let's see. Created by Keanu Reeves, of course. Uh, written and illustrated by Steve Skros, S K R O C E. Uh, colored by Dave Stewart, which is a name I've seen before, and lettered by not Eric Weathers. Hmm. 
All right. It's one of the few books. One of the yeah. ones that squeaked by. Yeah. How did how did we not get Keanu Reeves to know you existed? I don't know, but I feel like it's a uh, a failure on everybody's part, really. Yeah. But not mine, but everybody else. True. True. And to answer Mo's question, this was Bez the first issue of Berserker and the uh, LCS version. All right. Oh, so I asked if I could interview you, and I don't feel I was ready, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of short notice, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, I thought you, you'd say something like, yeah, maybe in a month. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm in promo mode. I'm ready to go, man. <laughs> you are. By the way, we opened with your promo uh, just so, uh, last week, too. I, I played your trailer. Oh, um, thank you. Appreciate welcome. that. It's not, not a problem at all. Uh, so I don't want to overly retread things that have been trod before. And if okay. you don't mind, I'm going to turn invisible here. How do I do that? Yeah, there we go. That's me. Um, I forget. So you grew, everybody knows that you grew up in Kansas for the most part. Is that correct? Yeah. I was born in Dallas, Texas, but all I remember is Kansas. Okay. And, and then for, um, uh, let's see. I was, where I was going to go with that is we also have heard repeatedly on your first campaign that just living in, in Kansas, everybody gets hammered with the wizard of Oz, Oz stuff. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's no, it, it's just cliche at this point. <laughs> Everywhere you go, uh, there's wizard of Oz. If you go to a gift shop, there's wizard of Oz there. Right. Mm -hmm. Any kind of, uh, even like a, um, any kind of mom and pop shop, there will be something Wizard of Oz there. The airport has a Wizard of Oz store. Like, it's just kind of the thing. It's like I assume if you go to what is it, Philadelphia, you're going to get Rocky memorabilia. Uh, sure. It's a part of. Uh, if you you know if you, if you go to Detroit, it's going to look like RoboCop. Um. No, but it's just a part of the Americana, and just happens to be one of the few things that Kansas is known for, besides being in Tornado Alley. So. Sort of like uh, that, that place with the giant ball of string. Yeah. Which I think is that might is that in Kansas? That might actually be in Kansas too. I'm I'm not sure. Really? Uh, largest ball of twine. I mean, there's probably how many largest ball of, balls of twine are there? Is there just one, or is there like a competition where they each year the the other one adds another hundred yards to it to make it know. just a little bit bigger? I'm looking up largest. I thought it would be like Minnesota. Um, largest ball of twine on record. Uh, the ball it can't. It's in Cocker City, Kansas. <laughs> Told you, Kansas. It's a weird place to put it, but uh, it is what it is. I drove. Uh, uh, did he? It's twine, you philistine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Mo is here to rip on me. That's that's why we're that's withholding. perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm just be here nice. to be the audience to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should start talking jujitsu because he loves when I talk jujitsu. <laughs> I'll make up everything uh, that I can about that because, you know, <laughs> everything I learned from it, I learned from Joe Rogan and not actually doing it. Oh, that's good. That That's yeah. okay. Good. So if I ever I'm get to meet you. attention yeah. while I listen. So it'll be great. Yeah. I can say, let's go to the gym and maybe I'll win for once. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I ended up working against a guy who's five inches shorter than me. And I think he's active military. That dude was freaking strong. Yeah. Um, anyway, you had a military background. And so what exactly was your, what do they call an M MIS, MOS? Your MOS, job? Uh, MOS. Military. Yeah, I don't even know what that stands for anymore. It's been too long. Huh. Uh, but I was an 11 Bravo, which is infantry. Okay. That's what I and wanted. I, I, I wasn't one of the ones that tried to get something fancy like nuclear scientist and was too dumb. I actually was too dumb to begin with and decided to go into infantry, which is basically just custodial work. That's all mm. it is. Did you? So what was the most interesting thing you saw? Like, did you see, I don't remember your, your resume, but did you see any, uh, were you deployed? No, I was not deployed. Um, most interesting thing I ever saw. I, I asked the wrong question first. I should have asked, were you deployed? And then I was not deployed. So I didn't see anything interesting. No, I mean, just shenanigans. It, it, I mean, it was like college because mm. I was in college for a couple of years beforehand. So it was like that, except 
little, I think I'd say a little wilder, um, at least in my experience. But uh, no, I never saw anything crazy. Just mm. normal. I don't know. I don't have an interesting story there that I can think of right now. Oh, that's okay. We had Craig on last week. He he, he had he was interesting enough to make up for all five of us. So uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Eric, the the secret to a good blue jitsu story. Oh, <laughs> blue jitsu stories to make it sound like the script for a gay porn. Nice. Okay. All right. By the way, he does that all the time. He's I can't be careful enough with what I say. Eric was on the front lines of the first battle of Indiegogo. True. I was there. I still have the scars to this day. Mental and physical. All right. So two couple directions I want to go with in this. Just remind us, because we you mentioned this before, around somewhere around your military career, you met your wife. Yeah. Uh actually I actually met her before. Um I went, like I said, I went to college before I joined uh, the army um, mm -hmm. and we were friends. We met in uh, campus crusade, which was a Christian ministry at our, yeah, all around the country as far as I know, but it was yeah. in our, in our uh, uh, college. And mm -hmm. um, we were friends. There was a whole friends group, you know, it was a small, uh, the campus crusade was small. So like all of us were friends and then, um, beginning of sophomore year because the first year you have to live in the i about said barracks you have to live in the dorms but then we, <laughs> we all got we all got houses uh and so a bunch of the guys and me we got a house and like across the street was the girls and uh you know we just hung out all the time and was friends and then it was like peace out i didn't even say goodbye apparently i just left after christmas break <laughs> i just left <laughs> Didn't think like to say, hey, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to join the army. It's 2003 and we're in Afghanistan and Iraq and I'm uh, going to go join the army. Because, some, hey, you know what? They just captured uh, Saddam Hussein. This thing will be over in no time. And somehow you were never deployed. Somehow I was never deployed, even as an infantryman. That's weird. Either really good or really bad. Yeah. <laughs> um did you just not know how to i don't know it's i shouldn't ask <laughs> no it was a it was a medical medical discharge oh okay I, I two years in and like right before they my company deployed i was sent home so because some people got in and got deployed very soon out of, out of boot camp other people just were doing other yeah things. um i would have been i'm trying to think uh, maybe a, it would have been a year of training but i got hurt like pretty much right away after uh, after basic um, they, uh, I went through physical therapy for like six to nine months mm -hmm. and then they were like, and, and that whole time I didn't train with the rest of the guys. I mean, I was just kind of doing nonsense, you know, I'd stay behind most of the time when they went on training missions and all that. So, um, I was close with these guys, but not as close as I could have been or should have been. And, uh, so it came time for deployment and they were like, basically gave me the choice. Like you can go home on this medical or you can go with these, you can go. And I was like, well, I'm going to go home because at that time I was engaged. So it seemed yeah. to, me to make more sense that way because I went to college, uh, dropped out and joined the army. And then after basic between basic and when I was deployed is when, uh, uh, my wife and I started dating. So I see. So it wasn't, like you got engaged and then just left for Christmas break without saying goodbye. And somehow no. that all worked no. out. <laughs> okay. No, it was close to that, but not exactly. Yeah. There, there has to be a, a, a missing detail in there. And here we go. I was close to the guys, but not as close as I could have been. I just heard blues eye, gl eyes glaze <laughs> over. Yeah. You got to close the distance before you can go for a takedown. Anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, likewise with your wife, you had to close the distance before you could get engaged. Start, start yeah. getting in there somewhere. I had to try uh, twice, actually. You mentioned Campus Crusade, and for a yeah. lot of people who don't know that, uh, the original name was Campus Crusade for Christ, and yeah. it was just a campus organization. Um, a lot of people, especially after 9-11, got very offended by the word crusade because they overread it. Um, a lot of uh, non-Christians would be you know, un unjustly offended by the fact that that word exists. And then uh, I think now, depending on, it might depend on where you are, they've changed their name to either CCCI, which is Campus Crusade for Christ International, but now 
it doesn't stand for anything. They just erased it. Or in mm -hmm. some places, they're called crew. Crew. Yeah, I mean, we we called it crew back then, but it was mm -hmm. uh, Campus Crusade for Christ at the time. It was just crew for short. So it may have been one of those things where it's like, it's not the YMCA anymore. It's the Y. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Here's Mo. Uh, it didn't help matters that they used K's instead of C's. Nice. <laughs> Oh, geez. Anyway, so speaking of which, so that I, I assume then if you did only two years of college, you were Christian before college then? Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. Okay. So how did that, how did the seriousness about Christianity come about or come about for you? Some people say, oh, I was eight. I got one friend who says he was two. What was yours? Uh, that's actually an uh, interesting question. Um, I was always raised, I was raised in a Christian home. Um well, I should. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my parents took me to church. We went to a Lutheran. We actually went to the BTK church um, in Park City, Kansas. BTK? Uh, the, uh... Yeah. The, the, the serial killer. The, the, oh, the, okay. The, right. Yeah. That BTK. He, he was, a, <laughs> I think, a deacon at Christ Lutheran Church in Park City, Kansas. And we went there while he, I think while he was a deacon there right, before anybody knew any of that. Um, went there. I'm going to get my dates wrong, but we went there for a few years, kindergarten, maybe first grade. Um, mm -hmm. And then went to, then kind of didn't go to church for a while. I, I did get baptized there, but I didn't know, I didn't know what it, what it was. I didn't know right. what it meant. Um, although now I have no, knowing what I know now about baptism, I would have said I was, I was good. Um, but, uh, uh, we ended up going to a Baptist church, I think semi Southern Baptist. I've never really, I'm not really good with denominations. Uh, well, for there a are long like, time. and that's there, what's there are so many kinds of Lutherans. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, a we BTK to, Lutheran. Wow, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm the non serial killer kind. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, then we went we went to a Baptist church for several years, and that's where I got really really deep into the church. Um, some of the best experiences of my life were there. Youth group. I mean, it was in youth group in the '90s, and everybody was you know it was a wild time. Um, had a lot of fun doing that, doing mission trips, and uh, just what one would do then. Um, you know, listen to Five Iron Frenzy and mm -hmm. uh, play cow tongue football with our youth pastor and all this. so yeah and then kind of went to chapel during basic um and uh when i was in the army and came home never really didn't really find a, a local a, a local church until uh about six years ago and we really plugged in there so it's our local uh -huh. church here in town and that's like that's our family now you know, nice. It's like yeah, best thing that ever happened to us. Cool. Uh, and is it a smaller one? It used to be, but we're starting to grow uh, quite a bit. We grew actually through COVID because we said, no, we're not. We did the, we, they shut down like everybody did for that. Well, I think it was three months. And then we mm -hmm. said, no, we're not doing that anymore. And they never enforced any, any uh, mandates on masking or anything like that. So it really exploded because of that. Because people were tired of that already back in, you know, 20, late 2020 or whatever it was, 21, I forget. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been absolutely wonderful. I mean, it's very, uh, very word driven, very much like we spent three years just in the book of John. We're probably going to spend six years in Genesis. Um, every Wednesday we go through Revelation a non-dispensational revelation book. I look at it as if we're, um, what is it called? Uh, post mill or post mill. I don't know okay. if you know what any of this means, but, uh, Oh yeah. I'm, I'm closer okay. to a, uh, a millennialist, but I couldn't articulate it off the top of my head right now because I spent so much time around pre mills. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for it's, anyone who... it's interesting. These different viewpoints for sure. Oh yeah. And, uh, it's, it was really funny. My, my old pastor, I got to click a few of these, uh, allegedly I'm starting a cult of the Lutherans. That does actually make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and they spent 14 years on a Romans. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, my current pastor, 
uh, you can find him online. His name's Chris Roseborough. Uh, he's famous for being a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. yeah, he's he's not antagonistic. He just says, "Here's it." Well, I'll, I'll I could talk about him a little, in a little bit, but um, he looked at somebody spending a ton, you know that much time on a on a book and gave an example of it, and it's like, wow, they're they're spending so many details on this book, they're absolutely missing the point. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, like 14 years on Romans is, is there are some churches who do it and some do it poorly, you know, but it's. No, I, I don't think, uh, I really love the, the, the depth. It's, John, especially, is, is a book that you can do it in a couple of sermons, but if you spend a lot of time in there, the, the, the artistry that is woven in those words is mm -hmm. incredible. The the poetry and the very I want to learn how to how to say, or you know how to recite, the first several verses of John in Greek because I've heard it before, and it's it is poetry like this, yeah. it's unbelievable. Anyway, yeah. I could probably go grab it off the shelf and try to pronounce it for you, but that'd be more boring than I normally am. <laughs> uh, Nothing better than listening to somebody try to pronounce words they don't fully know. Yeah, I used to pronounce Greek way better, but I don't anymore. He's famous for being a pain in the ass, but he's not antagonistic. Why is he considered a... <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you're insinuating. Oh, God. Okay, all right. I guess I have to explain this now. The peer pressure. Um, mm -hmm. my, pa my pastor, uh, he was... Uh, I'm trying to remember everybody's name. It's not CFW Walter. Um, that's a guy who wrote a book, uh, Law and Gospel. But he's, he he's heavily influenced by that book, only... The, uh, his, his, uh, what's the guy's name? Walter. He was an apologist who recently died, and I don't want to say Walter Matthau because that's an actor. Michael Heiser. No, no. Oh, he more recently died, oh. which made me sad. Um, yeah. By the way, I was a fan of Heiser up through about 2014 when I lost, or 2013 when I lost track of him, and allegedly he kind of went off railsy. But I'm still cool with everything he said before that, and I don't know what he said after that. So, um, okay. Walter. Uh, you know what? All right, I'm just going to look for one set of files in my downloads folder. Downloads, organize. This is, it, it has to spin up the drive. This is stupid. And uh, you didn't get a solid state there, bud. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, my system's on solid state. The data isn't. And I'm not seeing him. So I'm just going to have to give that up. Anyway, this Walter guy, um, he, it was suggested that, that Chris go to Christ College, Irvine. And be and you know get hooked up with this this Walter dude whose name I can't remember. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, because of the influence of this Walter dude, and Chris came out of business school, so finally he went to or sorry, Chris went into regular business after this after school. Excuse me. I am fumbling my words, man. It's Part fine. of the ADHD. <laughs> he hit, he hit up Christ College Irvine, and he's a little bit miffed that it's now called um, called a uh, Concordia, not because. They changed the name since people in the city of Irvine, California, were offended by seeing the word Christ on a street sign. Of course they would be. Yeah. And they capitulated. So anyway, with that, he uh, he got in there under Rod Rosenblatt and others. And Rod Rosenblatt's a really good discernment and influence, along with this Walter dude whose name I can't remember at the moment. And then, is it in this folder? I'll just look. Um he got out and kind of took over where this Walter guy. Oh, Walter Martin. That's his name. Mm. And he's, he was uh, popular on John Ankerberg's show repeatedly, but he's a discern discernment and apologetics dude. So um, my pastor would be walking down the street and get accosted by Jehovah's witnesses and Mormons until he started learning more of what was going on. And then um, they, uh, they started avoiding him. <laughs> we'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> but so he, he eventually, by 2008, realized he didn't like what he was seeing going on in evangelicalism. And so he started a podcast. Uh, the, he wanted to do regular radio, but he figured out from through uh, consultations or working with consultants, sorry, that to do regular radio, you have to have advertisers. And all the advertisers on Christian radio are the book publishers. And guess who the biggest books sold by those publishers are? All the heretics. Right. So he's biting... He's basically putting the I, hand that feeds. Yeah. All that before, before it was feeding him. Mm -hmm. So he went with um, going online for quote unquote radio broadcast and his website was called pirate Christian radio. It's been through a few changes and that's where I, I finally like discovered him before. I probably come across him then. 
yeah. recognize that name. So, so long story, not short. It's your interview, not mine. Um, <laughs> so you, you were just raised in a Christian household and then it, uh-huh. things just played out from there. Um, what I, I'm curious about is you're writing these books. It seems like the biggest life experience you have that's influencing your artistry right now is you're doing a Kansas book. It seems like that's about it. Um, where, where has uh, being a Christian, I, how do I say this? Well, I don't want to put you in a spot where you have to tattle on anybody, but where has being a Christian been an influence or even a hindrance in, in your work? Pick either direction. Uh, well, influence, you know, I, uh, everything we do, we need to do, do as if we're doing it for God. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, put your best foot forward. Always, uh, and that's not always easy to do. Uh, some days you just don't want to do it, uh, wh- whatever it is, whatever your job is. Um, so uh, that's what I remind myself of a lot is um, put out as professional of a, you know, as a, as a professional of a, of a face as you can, uh, do your best work um, because ultimately I'm not doing it for the client. That's not the end of it. Mm-hmm. That's part of it. But the end of it is I'm, I'm doing it because I should be doing the best I can because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Um, I think it's in, I think it's in Peter. Uh, but I don't remember the exact verse. Um, but it is ultimately, you know, do everything you do, do as it, do as it unto the Lord. And uh, to me, that is uh, number one in terms of uh, effort I put into things, and uh, you know, just staying um, just trying to stay clear of things like burnout and and all of that. And like I said, it's it's not easy because I'm human. And I'm going to have jobs I don't like or uh, have a day where I, I probably could have not phoned it in as much or what have you. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, as far as influencing my work, uh, my creative work would be um, I, I don't want to I don't care for making Christian content. Um, I find it can be rather um limited mm-hmm. uh in terms of audience reach um the lord of the rings preaches the gospel and reaches more people than most of what uh, uh kirk cameron uh, movies have done you know mm-hmm. i don't i don't want to preach to the choir in that sense i want um i want truths to be told in my story um i in my stories i want to not be afraid to be edgy or be uh, have, I mean, look, the Bible's filled with things that most Christians wouldn't want their kids to watch on television. Right. So um, I don't see any reason to shy away from, from things like that, whether it be violence or language or what have you, um, as long as it's not uh, hatred towards somebody. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, speaking like i said speaking truths i think that's important you know men should be men women should be women that kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah it's funny that the bible uses the term unmanly before before it even describes um a feminine ma- man and it's like mm-hmm. well there is a stage in there where we're abandoning manliness without necessarily being feminine you know? yeah that's like sh- skirting your responsibilities is what uh you know the bible calls men to be specifically yeah. or i'd say more more specifically you know, like husbands and fathers mm-hmm. rather than you know and their roles as as headship of of their families and and all of that that's important those are those themes are important i think they those themes are absolutely lost in culture these days there are no strong men um there's there's there, you know name name a, a movie or a television show with a a strong fem- a female, a strong <laughs> name, a movie with a strong female lead. I dare you. Uh, yeah. To, to have a, a masculine uh, father, 
who works and provides and and isn't a doofus you know like growing up in the 90s that every almost every sitcom dad was like that yeah and yeah. it's it's disheartening even i mean i i remember feeling it of just uh well I remember feeling it, but not understanding what I was feeling, which was sort of the, the sorry for the noise, the, uh, the lostness that comes when that's your role model. Yeah. Yeah. It's, right, I think it's super, I mean, it's really important for those things to be around. And right now there's, I mean, there's a, there's a war against it. There's a war against masculinity. There's a war against fatherhood. There's a war against motherhood these days i mean it's mm -hmm. all it's all it's a it's a war on the western christian uh viewpoint for sure because like you said they'll capitulate and take christ out of the out of the name of their uh uh church or whatever it was it's like that's it's a, a seminary loss that we don't huh it's a seminary Sem yeah, the seminary said so that's a loss that we didn't need to take. Right. You know, and you, you know what? Uh, but back to creativity mm -hmm. after I hit, hit up Mo Biggs here, because he is creative. Uh, the only mm -hmm. time that it, it, the it I forget what the it was, a hindrance was when, when oh, yeah, being a uh, Christian was a hindrance in your, your work, was when uh, Eric received pushback over lettering the most important panels with a red font. Dude, Mo is creative here. <laughs> he really is. Yeah, let's see what he's got. It's and sometimes a little, a little uh, rated R. But anyway, Kirk Cameron most lo lost most of his credibility when he turned another role of Bible Man that just launched on a Willie Ames mania beyond even the salad days of Charles in Charge. There's a lot. I spent okay. My time in evangelicalism took the culture away from me. There are things mm -hmm. in here he's referring to that I don't know who certain people are or things like that. <laughs> I under, now I didn't grow up in that evangel. We culture was not taken. I mean, my, American culture wasn't. My parents were like, you know, maybe a little loose with it, which I'm very grateful for actually, because I was able to. You, you I know, I, I understand what it's like now, and I have two boys that I'm raising, so I, I know what what to look out for. Um, so that's been quite the blessing. Uh, at the same time, it's like I have. Uh, very loose limits compared to a lot of other people in my church in terms of what they're allowed to watch and th things because it, those show, you know, it's like they're going to watch Terminator 2. It's one of the greatest movies ever. So we're mm -hmm. going to watch Terminator 2. And when Terminator cuts his uh, skin off of his forearm, that's amazing. And my eight year old's like, that's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, so, and it's like, you can enjoy these things and you know, you can just tell them, Hey, those words that they say, you just don't say those words. That's not, you know, you just yeah. do things like that. It's, I think it's easier to, it's easier to teach that way too, because um, they'll see examples and those stories are rich. Their stories are rich with um, consequences and, and uh, all of that. It's like, you know, yeah. I like it. I well, it, this it, chat. I don't, sorry. I said, I, I really want you to read this chat. But Danny Tenner was a strong, independent man who didn't need no woman. He didn't need no woman, but he needed two other strong, independent men. I don't even know who Danny Tanner was. From Full House. Oh, okay, yeah. My dad from Full Bob Saget. It, and again, my dad was a little... Now, I was raised Catholic, but my dad was a mm -hmm. bit overbearing. And, I mean, there was homework time at 7 p.m. And a lot of TV we just didn't watch growing up. We didn't even have a VCR mm -hmm. for a very long time. So, uh, But rolling back a bit, let's see. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Mo. You threw my train of thought again as if I had a caboose. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't. <laughs> um, growing up in evangel or I didn't grow up in evangelicalism. That came to me a little bit later. Uh, but I hear you saying things that are nice and reassuring about how you're raising your boys. OK, Terminator movies. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard two things preached? One is that every story is a sermon. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. OK. Yeah. And every story teaches. I, I believe that, but it's. If for other chicken and egg reasons about we we imitate what we see around us, we sometimes present what we see around us, and then that also teaches whoever's reading, it reinforces, you know, things like that. Right. Um, but then the other one I heard once, I'm not kidding, at what I refer to as the old abusive church with the pastor who thankfully retired, um, it are, he, he was even getting into some really bad wordplay at one point with challenging you on what you enjoy because are you putting your joy into... Now he's not, he's just 
using the word joy in two places, not and and in. But mm-hmm. you know, and he went off on that for a minute or two, where I just said, okay, okay, something's wrong here. I can't do this anymore. And yeah. worrying, navel gazing, worrying over if I enjoy something in the culture, then is it really a a, a violation of holiness and you know, um, the preaching there was very much try harder to make yourself holier. They, they yeah, want to admit which it. Which is anti-gospel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they were saying, oh, we're saved by faith, sanctified by faith, you know, sanctified by grace, blah, blah, blah. But then yeah. when you look at the actually teach, it's all sanctified by try harder. Yep. Oh, anyway. very, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it's, I mean, that's rampant. It, I think it, there's less of that these days. It was really big back then and i I think also like mass culture was huge in the 80s and 90s so you can understand why that came because you start out with a satanic panic of dnd and it and then you know it it i think it can all maybe spiral from that i don't know what happened before then it was before my time but um it's certainly uh not i i don't see it as much as i used to Mm -hmm. Now, I need a moment because if my camera is aimed correctly, we don't have to worry. And I think it is, but just a sec. I got to take my earphones off for a sec. Okay. All right. So I have noticed this. This always bothered me about the creative arts way back in the 90s. There we go. Hold on. The headphones back on. So why? There are reasons why I'm so interested in story and comics and whatnot, but there we are. So this, oh, wrong way. This is a shirt that I got from Matt Hughes, the okay. um, the what's the uh, prize fighter, and yeah, his story is a little bit sad. He's had some brain damage from a, a truck accident, and um, so he's lo- he's lost his family and stuff. So it's it's not going well for him. Um, but this, notice how it's the army logo and the army of mm-hmm. one slogan that used to be out there. Hello, Felix. Good to see you here. And but he says the. And of course, it says the, uh, the Lord our God is one, which is perfectly fine. I am always bothered by the lack of creativity among Christians, where everything is a parody of somebody else's logo, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. If, yep. Yeah. You are. Yeah. I 1000% agree to you, agree with you on that one. I remember um, in high school, there was this thing where they were like mock uh brand t-shirts so instead of reese's it would say jesus Mm -hmm. um but it looked exactly like a reese's um uh peanut butter cup logo things like Mm -hmm. that yeah um this kitschy uh i don't know understand the point of it i mean i I know god's sovereign over all things and somebody might have come to faith because of a reese's jesus t-shirt but (laughs) uh it's possible but yeah, that stuff really uh, kind of makes me roll my eyes. But there's also there's also um, I notice this a lot is some people. I may not articulate this the way I want to, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Some people uh, use their Christianity as a uh, an excuse to not be really good at what they do. Um, mm. I have noticed. Uh, Christian artists, it's difficult for me to find, I have found a few, but to find some that are like true craftsmen above everybody else. Um, Most of the time it's kitschy cartoon stuff with slapped on, uh, you know, mock mock logos and um, just sort of bad drawings or stuff for kids and it's not ever um anything that is uh i mean true artistry and true um like undeniably beautiful stuff not right. just you know it's really hard it was really hard to find that back then um shant actually shant and jetty pointed me towards a guy by the name of jacob weidman i think and he's a calligrapher and his work is absolutely phenomenal and i'm gonna see if i can actually pull it up I have it bookmarked somewhere. Yep, I found it. That's very rare for me. You're very fast at this, like compared to the the host. Anyway, <laughs> while, <laughs> while you're pulling that up, we've got some Reese's, the Reese's Jesus oh, stuff no, he, going on. He logged his. Uh, he closed his website. I guess he's oh, no. updating his website. I can't even show you. 
but ah. never mind. He's it's had, password protected. He must be doing an update. So, uh, let's see. We've had from Mo the sweet savior. Um, we've had savior the flavor. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, that was actually on a Reese's Jesus shirt. My a dude in my high school wore that shirt. Wow. Yeah, same. Uh, never. Uh, Felix says he's never seen a shirt like that. I've seen them with the old Pepsi logo, where it looks like a, a spiky bottle cap, and it says Jesus instead of Pepsi on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't understand what that was, but yeah, so, I mean, even so, like cartoonists these days, like you don't see a lot of open Christians like just being phenomenal. You, they're out there, but it's you know. It's like you think of your favorite artists and then you want to wonder, uh, I wonder if they're Christian and, and you know, you don't, shouldn't have to wonder. It should be, um, at least out there somewhat, but I mean, the art world is, uh, is pales in comparison to the Christian music scene. So I don't even, that is a whole other ball of wax, but. Oh, the, the Christian scene, uh, the way, the way. Uh, the guy I mentioned before, not the Walter dude, but the next one, uh, Rod Rosenblatt, whom you can still find online. If anyone's interested, uh, a good starting place for him is a lecture. There are two versions of it. It's called The Gospel for Those Broken by the Church. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, The Gospel for Those Broken by the Church has a lot to do with how, how we're all a little bit off kilter in applying law as if beating people over the head with law sanctifies. And yeah, it doesn't. It, yeah, it, it doesn't help you and he yeah. gets into a little bit of pelagianism and semi-pelagianism um where i think it's hilarious that the catholic church officially condemned semi-pelagianism and then adopted it like immediately <laughs> so <laughs> but now most evangelical churches have adopted it as well so anyway um but that rod rosenblatt i think he put it pretty well with crap my my caboose just fell off again because i went took that side road adhd sucks man it really does i, I, I don't recommend it it doesn't no. sound like fun uh blue had his own jesus uh choice of a blue generation oh i'm just gonna close that <laughs> no he's on fire tonight he, he is um, because his soul won't be anyway uh, <laughs> um Rosen, rosenblatt he oh you know what? If I try to find, I'll just remember it later. Uh, I was thinking though, if the Sistine Chapel needed to be lettered, do you feel qualified? Ooh, you know, <laughs> why, not? why not? I mean, it's better than whoever tried to um, uh, repair that Jesus portrait. Oh like man, five or ten years ago, or whatever that was. Y yeah. Oh, that was so sad. Uh, I see a lot of the old world art where where people can make comments about. Michelangelo wasn't truly, you know, faithful or, or was rebellious in this way or that way. But a lot of yeah, so old, was David. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the the old world artists, I mean, they they saw their their quality of work as being an honor to God. They really yeah. are doing for God. Um, I'm, I really, I'm kind of sick of of seeing. How should I say this? I'm tired of. of and this is, these are from my evangelical days. I haven't heard much of this as a Lutheran, but my time as a Lutheran is a little bit different. Um, I got into an online church for people who were previously abused in churches. And, and so that's since 2015. So the whole, can we be online thing is an old issue for me. Yeah. Uh, it's this, this people being fans of whatever's out there and then saying, that'd be really cool if musician who, you know, musician X came to came to christ got saved whatever you know that's mm -hmm. that sort of thing and uh, oh hey i kind of just remembered why i brought up rosenblatt with what he talked about hammering people with law driving it drives people away from faith and turns them to either despair because they're not accomplishing or uh self-righteousness because they need to pretend that they're accomplishing and yeah if i don't know if you remember from the 90s there wasn't just uh five iron frenzy there's also joy electric starflyer 59 um and then a uh, uh, circle of dust was this like we're metal but we want to do dance-ish metal it's kind of weird and okay. that that's a guy who's now known as cell dweller and his church came down on him for the music he would produce even though his first album was absolutely fine as a christian that drove him away from faith it's very sad it and is what, um yeah. the people keep people get in the way unfortunately People, uh, just one, humans get in the way of the of of uh, the gospel. 
Yeah. One of the things Rosenblatt brought up along those lines was um, uh, how many people will be saved that we don't even realize it. And even yeah. those we, we drive away from the church may still be saved. And at my old church, it was constantly scoffed after people would leave. He went at, he left us because he was not of us, which is a semi quote of the Bible. And it's disgusting, you know? Yeah. So anyway, but back to uh, artists. It's a, um, you want to do your best and you're actually quite renowned for your lettering. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not to bore you to death with, sorry, I went off on two tangents there. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm just chatting. It's fine. With, with every story being a, a, a sermon in some way and a hero, hero figure is really descending from some parallel to being saved and whatnot. Where are you going with battle brick road? Cause she's a strong character. Yes, she is a strong character, but she's not a strong independent woman who don't need no man. Um, she's strong willed. Um, I can't tell you where we're going with it. That'd be spoiling it. Well, um, I don't, I'm, <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still no good at interviewing. <laughs> um, but I will tell you this. It's, okay. it's very much a point for me to make sure that um, her, uh, that Thea, Thea's, how do I want to put this? Just her existence, I guess. I'm not, I'm not sure what the right word is, but um, that, that she is authentically female in that, um, maybe what we're putting her through is going to be too much for her. Hmm. Um, you know, it's, she's not going to come in and save the day. It's not her role in her own story. She gets, she's the one who was rescued. Um, she's the damsel in her own story. Um, in, in a sense, because if Scarecrow doesn't show up, she's gone. If hmm. Tin Man isn't there, she's a goner. If Lion isn't there, like, Trouble awaits her uh, because she is a. She's not completely helpless. She does have some training in her. She knows how to use a weapon. She has a military past, but to for her to you know rush in and kill all the flying monkeys in the room uh, to rest to save everybody because you know she's the 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 female has to has to win. Um, no. That's that's certainly not it. I, I definitely want to make sure that she is shown to be vulnerable, weak, uh, not as strong at all compared to the the male characters. Um, she's going to uh, hurt people unintentionally because of her quest. But she's so driven and, and passionate about trying to find her dad that that's going to not always go well. Good. And uh, she's got a lot of lessons to learn because of that. So. Good. That's that's realistic. We. That I like your, uh, what you're naming and, and what's going to happen because I know these are headlines because we all do that. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. And what about the uh, the men around her? Are they going to have vulnerabilities that we'll see? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you have uh, I'm trying to tiptoe around certain things. You have sure. Scarecrow, who himself is blinded by vengeance. And there are there's uh, there's obviously a negative side to that. Um, you have Tin Man, who I think represents innocence, um, because he is. I think I've mentioned this before, but he's newly sentient, so he's got a he's going to have a childlike. Uh, quality to him, mm. which I think will play well in a, in a, um, a dynamic between him and, and Thea, um, more so than, say, uh, like the Toto character, because he can't, Toto doesn't speak, but right. um, uh, Tin Man is going to enter this, uh, this world with newer eyes in this world than even Thea has, and she's only been there for a couple of days in Oz, so, um, yeah. It, that's that's a lot of fun to play with there. Um, the um, I wouldn't say necessarily motherly um, in a full sense uh, relationship between her and Tin Man, but it, it's certainly ish um, in that 
she's going to want to see him be a kid, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> they're all like they're all killers, but then they have these personality traits that are di wholly distinct from one another, which is a whole lot of fun to play with. Just as much as they're uh, distinct in their character designs, they're distinct in, in their full characters as well. And Lion is um, sort of, uh, I mean, you could call him the Cowardly Lion when you meet him because he is skirting his responsibilities. He's sort of, um, Zeb put it, Zeb, Zeb's the writer and co right. writer. Um, he, he put it as, as he's like a reluctant king, like a reluctant Aragorn style of character who knows he's meant for something more and is shirking his responsibilities even though he knows like i shouldn't be i shouldn't be here doing and hiding away from things i should i should be you know quote unquote on the throne as it were i should be leading in in what that means for his story but yeah he yeah they they all have their conflicts and there's there they are a Mis mismatch uh, um, or a group of misfits for sure, and they each have an arc. It sounds like nobody's nobody's a prop. Oh yeah, yeah. We're weaving these stories as as best as we can to give everybody satisfying story arcs. Everybody gets, um, you know, uh, to grow together. And you, you, the interplay they have together, and that's been really difficult to do. Um, because there are certain beats you want to hit story-wise. You want to get to a certain point at a certain page count or by the end of a certain book. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been really difficult to balance that. There have been a lot of phone calls back and forth like, okay, I feel like we're getting to X a little too soon. Um, let's play in this a little bit. And then it's like, well, that's going to add more pages. And then how's that going to end with the page count? And, and there was a whole lot of stuff. Even in the first book, uh, we had that. We had some discussions about um initially that the fight with a watcher of the east was really short hmm. there was a fight but it was really short and i was like you know what let's let's play with this a little bit you know obviously in the movie in the book the house just falls on the witch she's dead and that's it we never get to meet her or anything and uh we um i was like let's let's play with this a little bit we've got room here let's give dorothy a fight um so that's why it ended up the way it did. It, originally, it was several pages shorter, and uh, it's. I think it turned out great. I really love how how we were able to, how we were able to play, turn that on its head, and, and play with it a little bit more. What I got out of that fight about Dor was uh, that Dorothy is a little bit smarter and more tactical than she's initially presented to be, and that whatever conversation she had with Toto to plan that action of dropping the pod on on the. Uh, I forgot her name. Wicked Witch of the East. Sorry. Uh, I can't. I hate the nerve, Watcher. man. Watcher of the East. Thank you. Um, yeah. That, you know, oh, they planned this off camera, so to speak. And just, right. yeah. And then when you do things like that, that bring out, you know, so I get to know the character a little bit more without it being, you know, hitting me over the head to, because I, yeah. And that's the other thing <laughs> is we, we don't want to hold your hand as, a, as creators. There's a lot of comics that hold your hand. And we had a couple of reviews that were like, um, it, it wasn't comic booky enough. Like, you didn't like. I should. We should have had characters' names uh, on the on the panel when we first see them. Hmm. It's like that's not how I want it. We want to tell this story. Where if a character's name is important, another character is going to say it, and you're yeah. going to get it in the context of the story, not just like here's a here's a caption with their name. Um, yeah, we're we're telling it. Well, we're telling it how we want to tell it for sure, but. Um, yeah, we're, we're, there have been several times where one of us has come up with an idea, usually me, and then the other says, that's too obvious. We're, we don't want to hold the, the, you know, their hands through the story. We want them to, to really think about things, um, mm -hmm. because it's going to be a better story that way anyways. Yeah. It involves me, the reader in the world. It's yeah. And that's the difficult, that's another difficult part is, is, is keeping you in the world uh, when you're doing um, a well-known yet public domain IP, it can be really tricky to keep people in that world and not think about the other version of that world. That is the movie or the book or the, 
the you know the musical whatever um mm-hmm. what's up sumo we meet again we keep uh, <laughs> we keep crossing paths here unfortunately very unfortunately um keeping people in the world <laughs> yeah keeping people in the world so we deliberately omit things that will make you think of the wizard of oz movie you know we could have very easily went when when thea is looking over uh the the world that she just crashed into she could have said look uh, you know whatever the line is it looks like we're not in kansas anymore we could have said that but then you as the reader would have jumped out you would have thought about uh uh the actress uh, judy garland and you thought about the dancing and all of that Mm -hmm. and so the line is uh this certainly doesn't look like Kansas. So it, it, it's it's a twist enough that you can read that and not necessarily go, uh, oh yeah, this was your boss. Like you can you can be in this Battle Brick Road story that's not and not constantly think back to what is uh, the nineteen thirty nine movie, which most people are familiar with compared to compared to the book itself. I mean, right. By the way, we have several good chats to read, and I I really enjoyed it. I apologize lightly for uh give, not doing not giving the the review i should have given your book when i presented it on a live stream where i was falling asleep my own live stream where i was struggling mm. to stay awake <laughs> so do not go through my account looking for it just skip it man it's terrible okay uh, all right yeah anyway let's see what we got here <laughs> going back to the sistine chapel <laughs> if you lettered the sistine chapel it would have needed to to be lettered in latin could you handle hey. that as long as the script is there and I can just copy paste, we're good to go. It doesn't matter. That brings up a question. If we were going to get around to lettering, I wanted to ask you a little bit about it, which is uh, when it comes to typos, what are the, who holds which responsibility for dealing with typos? I am not an editor. I'm not an okay. editor. Um, so, there are a few things I've caught. Um, I picked up on over the years of like, oh, that should be this and this should be that. Or certain comma placements and stuff, but um, my uh, I letter in Adobe Illustrator. And it, it does have an automatic spell check with the squiggly lines. However, mm-hmm. um, when you're lettering comic books, there's a lot of stuff that's misspelled because there's a lot of made up words in comics. Yeah, and so you like get squiggly sport. lines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you get a lot of squiggly <laughs> lines everywhere. So it gets it's hard to work with those. So I just I don't have them on mm-hmm. um, because it's like. It's going to give me a squiggly line if if a name is misspelled, especially if it's a, a made up name, and then right. if that name made up name is also misspelled from its from its normal spelling, it's going to call it misspelled. But I may not notice that because the e and the i are flipped or whatever it is. Uh, it, they're both going to get squiggly lines because they're both fake words. Um, so I, I go without it, and and uh, yeah, so I uh, I don't handle that. I'll I'll fix stuff if I see it, but. Okay. Um, most of the time, I'm not going to. Um, right. I know. I popped open uh, Winnie the Pooh, the mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh, Pooh beat Demon Hunter books, and on the front page of both books, there are errors. One is a wrong preposition and wrong punctuation. The other is in volume two. There's a an apostrophe missing from its in the bottom panel, and I was just yeah. going, "Who's responsible for this?" You know. Yeah. It, it, I mean, the writer. Every writer should have an editor, and then mm-hmm. once the book is lettered, it should go to a copy editor. It yeah. really should. Um, you could, you can, I mean, copy editors will charge you like maybe a buck a page. Like it shouldn't be that, that expensive to do it. And you're, you're going to have a better product at the end of it. Yeah. But, you know, and I'll, I'll send my, I'll send my stuff to the client and say, here it is. Let me know if there are any edits or changes or whatever. And then mm-hmm. sometimes people say, we're good. And I'm thinking, you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have your squiggly lines turned on, so you're basically running bare without a flak jacket. So, basically, yeah. Yeah. But I don't see that as I'm, I'm not an editor, and I, yeah. I don't think that's you know that's not it's not my yeah. uh, job Besides, description. What what if the text of somebody's uh, captions includes all the wrong homophones because that's part of the character being illiterate? Exactly. Yeah. Or, or, or like, uh, Chris Claremont used to do whenever he had a, you know, Banshee talking, he would, he would spell out their, uh, accent so Mm -hmm. you could read it, you know, 
like sh- like you know uh, um, rogue would say sugar with an ah on the end instead of sugar right things like that it's like you know you gotta have you gotta have good copy editors yeah uh, maybe i should start uh, hiring myself out as one okay you're gonna drive five iron frenzy from a church with any club mm-hmm. no wedge between their hearts and, their, and christ's love will prevail right <laughs> maybe it used to be i don't know how they they uh they they've changed quite a bit. They yeah, their original drummer Dennis, um, he because I, I have their one of their it's after they initially broke up they put out a couple of videos, and in the interview on the DVD he talks about how a bunch of of church people seem to take after nine eleven the attitude of of that Christ, the meaning of Christianity was to be anti Muslim, and it's like mm-hmm. no the meaning of Christianity has nothing to do with Islam you know, right. and so he so gave I have up that DVD around here somewhere. Oh, cool. Uh, he literally gave up his faith because of because of that attitude. He decided he's not Christian anymore. Yeah. Um, it was very weird. And then if you're familiar with the emergent, emerging, and other, all the lanes of that, I know that Reese the singer has gone very far down one of those lines, but a lot of these 90s singers have. Like even have. Uh, yeah, Mark Solomon seems to have. Uh, it was good. The weird thing about him is because of Five Iron Frenzy they, and, uh, and whoever else, the insiders and whoever else, Stave Zaker showed up for a show and they're like, you're the band. Where's your, where's your horn section? <laughs> now who's Mark Sullivan? Uh, uh, Solomon. Oh, to me, you're roboting. Let's see. Who is Mark Sol- Solomon? Hello. Can you hear me? Testing one, two. Earth just. So- to, to blue samurai earth to blue yeah i can hear you but you're not moving yet um can you hear me yeah, hey we're there you. okay good we have a network glitch sorry about that okay you said something about solomon i said who's mark solomon solomon oh, solomon um singer for stave zaker and what about him oh i'm sorry uh stave zaker would show up for shows at at events and people would wonder are you really a christian band where's your horn section uh i like yeah. stave zaker at uh, back in the day, uh, quite a bit. Yeah, that they, song. They keep, on, they, sorry, keep waiting. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were on my uh, my Winamp playlist quite quite a bit back in the nineties. <laughs> keep waiting, even though um, I'm not big on some of the theology presented in it. Uh, man, that song gets me in it all the time. So. Yeah, I like that. I like Gold and Silver as well. Yes, and his voice yeah. is. Oh yeah! Yes. His voice is. Cool. <laughs> I don't think I'd appreciate Argyle Park, where he hooked up with the guy from Circle of Dust, and they're all friends, and did an, let's just say, um, contract-breaking album where they're all under fake names. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he had to disguise his voice to do Neon Horse with the with the the dude from Starflyer Fifty Nine and a few others, but because wow. these are names I, I haven't heard Starflyer Fifty Nine in I don't know twenty five I, I, years. I don't like his newer stuff because all he does is sing about getting sing about getting old and having cancer and whatever, which he doesn't have cancer. But yeah, it's all about disappointment in life now. So I'm mm. just sticking to the early squealy. He's the Luke, the Luke Skywalker of uh, '90s Christian rock. Yeah. Uh, let's see. When they were saved, you might call it a soul in one. That's lovely. Uh, we have some greetings. Uh, we'll get to your your uh, which would you get your campaign in just a moment after we plow yeah. through these. Ironically, Blue's nervous nervous stomach is what keeps him on the throne. I am not Donald Delay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mo money, more problems. Not with GoFundMe back. GoFundMo back with confidence today. Uh, we've hello Sumathori. Thank you for showing up. And a lot more greetings. Arrogant Ape is here. Hey, Arrogant. Thanks for being here. What's up? Uh, the callbacks to movie were appropriate. I don't feel like a forced. Oh, look! I said the line bit. He's talking about your uh, your book. Yeah, it's actually. Uh, I got dinged on that once, um, and it's one of the reasons why we didn't do it. Is I actually forgot about that till just now. Um, there's a line in Flying Fortress that we pulled from Star Wars. It was really weird to have May the Force be with you in the middle of a World War II book. Uh, no, uh, there was a great kid. Don't get cocky. We, we mm-hmm. pulled that line from Star Wars, and somebody wrote us. Uh, I don't know how they got my address, but they wrote us a handwritten letter with this um, 
this critique of Flying Fortress. So they had, had gone to at least issue three. I mean, this was like not Flying Fortress remastered that I've done in CG and all of that, but this was way back in like 2013, 2014, when we were doing it as a, as a floppy. And he was saying like, hey, uh, homages are great, but I would avoid them because when you say the line from the movie, people think about that movie and they don't think about the story they're in. And I thought, was that letter from a guy named Joe? I, I don't know. Because, <laughs> you know, your editor. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was way before uh, Thunder Buns joined the team. Uh, so, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's important, I think, because Clint, I was talking to Clint on a uh, CG team the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and he mentioned how he, because Zeb was on and we were talking, he was, he was asking about music and Clint mentioned that he, he threw the lyric uh, today is the greatest because he was listening to uh, in fatal because he was listening to a bunch of smashing pumpkins at the time. Right. But it made sense in the, in the, in the context of the story. Like the, the character was very, being very happy about what was going on. And she was saying, today's the greatest, mm -hmm. but I was also reading it in my head as, uh, Billy Corgan singing it. I was trying mm -hmm. to think of his name. Chris Cornell kept coming up, which is completely a different voice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, so you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. True. You really do. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. I don't, I want to be in your book. I'm uh, sorry. You don't have to paint mm -hmm. a little teddy bear in your book. I want to be enveloped in your book while I'm reading it. <laughs> it's yeah. A little more accurate and not be pulled out to a hundred different Easter eggs, you know, Right. Uh, you're lettering the Sistine Chapel. I know I know at least 10 splort locations and one pull my finger. Glad to have okay. Arrogant Ape here. Uh, Thank you. So, <laughs> uh, somebody's, wait, is somebody's electricity being generated by a hamster on a wheel? Don't know what that's My about. hearing aid might be going off. I, I, get, I wear hearing aids. I'm deaf in my left ear. Okay. But I use them for Bluetooth so I don't have to wear headphones because it gets hot in my office. It oh. might be getting feedback. So if that's come, is it? I also closer. have, since I upgraded, sorry, since I downgraded from Windows 7 to 10, I have had audio problems where some people say I have a high hiss. So mm. might be might be troubles. Uh, is there anything else here? Uh, don't know sumo. Maybe Eric lives next to a dental office. That's probably me. They've described it like that before. Um, do a couple, all right, let's bring up, as I sort through these, present, share screen, window... There she is. And add to stream, please. Okay, there we are. This looks familiar. Yeah. Uh, listening to Staves Acre. That's not how you spell it. <laughs> on, a, on a Winamp. I bet the poor whipped llama appreciated the irony. Okay, I'm going to leave that go. Good to it see really, you. Yeah, Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. Okay. That was the little... Do you remember that? Did you do Winamp back in the day? Or I remember... Tired? I remember Winamp. I just didn't go deep into it with a lot of okay. culture. It like came with a sound bite, and that was their little slogan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was out of it. I didn't go deep. So what's this countdown? Is the world ending? Wait, why don't... Something's missing. Let me check a look at my website. Oh. Re just uh, refresh it. For some reason, the campaign total isn't loading. Oh, you know what? That's probably me. Here, it's this guy. Okay, allow... Yeah, we're going to need that. Uh, yeah. Oh, totally yeah, allow yeah. these. Yeah, we're good. Okay. And there you go. Sorry about that. That looks so much better. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I had some scripts blocking stuff. <laughs> I got to I gotta fix the, the website a little bit. I got to do some tweaking because it's just a big image and then some numbers. I want it to be like instantly you see some books when you open it up. Oh, gotta, okay. Got to adjust that, but but yeah, this is Battlebrick Road too. We're crowdfunding right now, uh, outside corporate crowdfunding websites. We're doing our own thing. <sighs> Thanks, Mo. <laughs> Just... All right. Let's so, did humdingers. this this uh, site looks really familiar to anyone who may have backed either uh, which ah, oh, geez, the Lucent or Downcast. Never heard of them. I don't no. know what you're talking about. Mm. So you didn't nope. just steal the template and fill in your own blanks. I don't have on it. any familiar. I've never heard of the the Blue Scent. What was that? Oh, 
yeah, the blue scent, it's a book I'm, I'm consulting on and okay. downcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, hmm. Interesting. Never heard of them. This is very strange. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I don't really promote. So <laughs> 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 anyway, all right. So what is, what is this mysterious little piece here? Oh, that is a whole lot of fun. Uh, that is the cover to the poster collection, the print collection, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing an 11 by 17 um, removable print print book. So um, what you're what you're looking at is the mock-up for what would be an 11 by 17 book with 10 or more removable pages, each with a an exclusive piece of artwork uh, never before seen, even by me, because I haven't seen any any of the artists' work yet. Because we're just starting to get people on board for it, sort of a last minute idea. So this does um, not reprint the prior covers. No, 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 no. Any artwork you've already seen won't be in it. It'll be oh. new, new pinups. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and eleven by seventeen. So they're essentially four dollars each. At least ten of them, possibly more. Yeah, at least ten of them. Dang, and that is cool. One of the ideas, one of the one of the things that we hope people do with it is take it to a con, get those artists to sign it. Uh, I would really like to get a blank page in there, an uncoded blank page. Because mm -hmm. I know they can do manual insertion um, when they're putting the uh, books together. It's not all machinery. They can they can go in and add stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know most gonna have fun with that with that phrase I just said out there. Um, but uh, <laughs> we uh, I want to do that so we could put in like a Bristol page uh, of art, a Bristol artboard, and mm -hmm. you know people can get a commission in there or get a GM piece done in the book, and it would just be uh, like a fun collector's thing. Nice, that is really cool. And then we talked music before. I, I have a, a wall of CDs. It's kind of disgusting, but you have a music piece in here, and we'll get Mo yeah. out of the way. Oh wait, there's more Mo. That there's always make... more Mo. Uh... <laughs> Mo Mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes I just give up, and you just have to say what you have to say. Like a couple just, weeks yeah. ago, it was yeah, it was. I was trying to get into his legs, and Mo. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. All right. So this is a, a, I know that the, the technically you are correct that this is an EP, um, yeah. but the language shifted where this is a single with a B side uh, and now an EP is supposedly longer. <laughs> like, but yeah. Anyway. It's, it's a seven inch. There's two songs. So I didn't want to call it a single. Cause I, I think I, I don't want people to think it's one song. It's two songs. So a two track EP. Yeah. Yeah, EP is way, EP is literally accurate for when uh, they started double siding vinyl, or yeah. or I guess it wasn't vinyl before; it was a particular type of bug wax, but whatever. Um, okay, so what are the what are these two songs? And no, I'm not asking you to sing them. Um, <laughs> uh, they're good because there aren't any lyrics, um, but they're actually listenable by scrolling down. There's a theme for the scarecrow and a theme for the Tin Man. Uh, Tin Man's theme is called the Spark, which is right there. And then I just I threw these up on YouTube, so you just click play, and then it'll take you to a, a it'll open up a YouTube uh, video. Uh, that that's what and, you think. <laughs> so. Yeah, unless your script is blocking it. Um, I'm I'm kind of persnickety. So. <laughs> I've noticed. And then the Reaper cometh is uh, a scarecrow's theme, and they um, I I, I just threw a quick. Um, ember you know animation of like embers flying around the character nothing nothing too crazy just to just to be able to put it up on youtube um but the music is by vasto who's a, a synthwave artist out of oh. sweden i think and he's done a lot of work with uh uh other guys in our in our sphere like vaughn and phil and and uh, carlo Rowe and a handful of other guys okay and cool. uh yeah it's been, it was a lot of fun we we commissioned him to do this stuff back in early 22 i think like it, we've had we've been sitting on these songs for a long time i've drawn to these songs i get them stuck in my head um they're really good the 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 tin man theme as the kids say it slaps um, <laughs> it's really good i legitimately um really enjoy these songs and uh i can't wait to listen and listen to them on my own record player yeah so it's synth wave okay Mm -hmm. The I I was kind of expecting something more banjo-y. I don't know why, but interesting <laughs> you know, cornfields. So. Yeah, yeah, I I can see that. Yeah. 
Oh, let's see here. Where are we with some of this? Links, links, links. Mo, uh, you're not going to impress Bancroft with the seven inch, not since he meant okay. So that's true. <laughs> that's true. We're going to have to go with the full twelve inch mm -hmm. at yeah. some point. So speaking of which, are uh, the full twelve inch being it can hold more songs? Mm -hmm. Are there going to be more song, uh, potentially more songs for other characters on future books? Yeah, yeah, that would be ideal. Um, what I would. I can't think of anything, any, uh, every idea I come up with has some sort of commercial value to it. I, I, I can't not think in those terms. Um, so ideally we would eventually get to a, a full 12 inch, maybe even a double LP, um, depending on how much music we would get created. Um, but short term, I want to do this campaign, uh, this, these two songs. And then on the next record, we would have, you know, maybe Tin Man and Lion, another another uh, two two song EP, and then you know on book four, maybe do Thea Toto, and and then you know the Wicked Witch of the West or something, something like that. I don't mm -hmm. we haven't ironed out all those details, but um, you know, if this does well enough, it might be one of those things where it's like, you know, if, if there's big enough demand 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 for for a full record then we can absolutely make that happen zeb himself is a musician and he's played around in um uh what's the name of that there's a there's a mac program that lets you not it's not garage band it's something else logic any no it lets you make music uh yeah i, I forget what it's called is it logic. logic i don't know but he he made he made this uh you know he's a he's a singer songwriter or at least was back in the day and oh. uh, musician as well and he he um, was playing around and because he got a brand new uh, a MacBook and uh, oh. he was playing around on that and he he made what sounded like one of those music you would uh, you would hear like on a Netflix intro for a Netflix series it's actually really really good so even he might have songs on this full this full album yeah. if we ever get to it. You know? By the way, there's a lot of of audio software for uh for tracking on uh on max uh, but mm -hmm. question from felix haas why do you have a <clears throat> suppressor on a golden glock uh because he's a, a silent assassin type and he says it looks like a g19 it's a clock 19 uh to avoid co copyrights ah okay all right good yeah. and and then cubase uh, suggests mo is possibly one of the softwares uh, zeb might use I, again, I don't know. Yeah, who called. knows? Okay, cool. Thank you. Well, um, the, it's not going to patch through and play audio with the way the way this is set up. So my apologies. And cool. I am gunning for <laughs> gunning for the uh, the vinyl, and one of the and just for me, it's going to have to be one cover. Sorry. You don't have to uh, apologize. Uh, I am looking. I, forward I'll to take this. <laughs> any any backers I can get. Uh, the great thing about the way we're doing it here is it. It, it works just like a any other web store. You can add whatever you want to your cart. Like if you wanted to back one of everything, you can either back the everything tier. You can just hit add to cart on everything. Um, so it's it really, uh, yeah. Well, look at that. Yep, just hit add to cart. And it was one of the things. One of the reasons why I have signatures separated like I do is if. Uh, if, it, if they weren't, if you go back to and you see the T-shirt, it says options, choose options or something like that because you have to pick a size. Right. Um, everything would have been that way. It would have said choose options and whether or not you want a signature ah, on the books. And, and, okay. and I wanted it just to be click and go, just click add to cart. I didn't want there to be any hindrance to the backer to say, well, you know, maybe I want to do this or that or and click on this and then I got to click on that and then I got to click on that. So. Mm -hmm. Oops. which is one of the reasons why, again why when you first pulled it up i was like i gotta i gotta adjust it a little bit so you're more into the store right away save image as uh oh what are we doing <laughs> we're saving an image just move that out of the way i guess we're uh, safe okay um because why should i not pay you for signing this when i can just not because these are free because <laughs> when i can just <laughs> copy this it. and just not yeah i can just download it now <laughs> so. yeah yeah, we're crazy. going to send you a printout of our signatures. Not even going to sign the book. Yeah. <laughs> also, the reason we did that is the only book right now that is officially signed without that uh, add-on is the special edition cover. That will be assigned and numbered with a book plate. So, okay. Take a peek in there. I know you enjoy talking about this one, so 
Oh, oh it's you? so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, every, I haven't found the best way to say this yet, but every print of this book, every copy, whether we print 500 or a thousand or a million, uh, every single copy will, will be a different variation of that cover that you see there. So the characters will be in different places, different rotations, different sizes, the bricks, different densities. Um, yeah. Different, again, rotations and sizes of the yellow bricks. It, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We, I got to play around with the software that, that makes it happen. Mm -hmm. And the printer that we use, uh, their actual printer is um, has that capability. It's, it's fairly new capability through uh, HP. And um, it started out as a collage. No, I'm sorry. It started out as mosaics only. And um, then recently they expanded and added collage technology. So like um, it's used in like, uh, oh, um, like labels and stuff like it. it the, I think the, the, the thing that the printer told us was uh, like, look up, uh, was it Nutella 6 million labels or something like that. And they use this to, Nutella did this whole um, new brand thing and they printed 6 million unique labels with this, with this printing technology. So, Jeez. um, yeah. So we're able to, to be just as, I mean, we could print a million different variations, but obviously we're going to limit it to however many we sell. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to uh, be able to play with that and have something that has never been done before in comics history, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So, Will they all be these specific five character, five figures? Yes, yes, yes. So okay. the the way you see them, that those are static drawings that I made, and it's not going to be like they're doing different poses or anything. No. Um, but they will be um, in just just in different um, configurations. Right. They'll be moving and not just the them, but also the bricks and and all of that. Yeah. So. So there aren't one you it's not like I'm going to get one of three different cowardly or cowardly lions and this may be one of them. No, there's one cowardly lion. He'll be moved around, resized relative to everybody else moved around, resized. So. Yeah. It, so it's it, yeah, it is. A, there's an algorithm that this software uses and mm -hmm. then it'll spit out all of the images. So I'll be able to see them before they go to print and I can green light and red light, whichever ones. And I can even go in and do minor adjustments to them. So cool if things yeah, if a, things don't pan out right there's a guy he's making a book uh dreams was it dream death king uh death's dream kingdom i think mm -hmm. or dreams death kingdom but i think it's death's dream kingdom and he has tons and tons and tons of images generated by ai that he then spends you know picks the ones he needs and it's it's really like just an exercise for him in in testing out AI, but mm -hmm. he might it would have been easier if he just drew it by hand. <laughs> so, yeah, I, so, none yeah. of this is AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't AI at all. I drew all of that stuff. It's colored by Steve Cannon, um, who was on uh, the Ironverse books, and he even lettered or lettered. Listen to me. Uh, he colored um, the Heidi backup story in Vaughn Klaus's uh, Monster MD. That little backup story about Heidi. He colored that and he's doing a lot of stuff. And I reached out to him and said, Hey, you want to be part of something special? And he did. So here we are. Cool. Well, Hey, thanks. Thanks for stopping in. Um, so I, I know I'm not a good interviewer yet. It's been years, man. <laughs> so, but I appreciate cool. you give, giving us your time and, and letting us look at your book and hear a little bit about what's behind it. Um, any last thoughts before we go? Uh, no, I guess, you know, if you've backed the campaign, please share the campaign. Let people know it's out here. I was, uh, it's been, it's been fun getting back on this campaign trail. So, check out battlebrickroad.com. Oh, you know we didn't mention there are other covers. Here's the main cover. Yeah. There's a Malin cover. There's the number one back there in a in a, in a bit uh, in a uh, bundle. But yeah, so I'm so sorry I forgot to mention that there are other items. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got my cover A, which is the main cover, which is wildly popular right now. It's outpacing all the other covers, even the cool special edition one. Um, then uh, that's cover A, uh, colored by Brett Smith, drawn by me. Cover B, drawn by John Malin, covered by Brett Smith uh, as well. And it's the first time they've worked together since Jawbreakers from like, mm. 2018. So that was cool to get them to uh, uh, work together again. And then... You know, if you want to, if you, if you're new to the story, you can get that catch-up bundle, the dynamic, the dynamic duo, uh, and then that book one is is uh, covered by Kelsey Shannon, 
and it did a phenomenal job. And you can get that with any of the other covers. And then we've got various bundles as well that add on add ons. And then they're discounted. And, you know, if you buy them in the bundle, it's a discount compared to whether if you were to buy them individually. So it was this now I could just create these bundles on my own, but you've got a yeah. discount here. Was yeah. this how how should I say this in terms of planning your bundles and, and whatnot? Is this is such an obvious question. Is having your own site just easier than Indiegogo? Uh, no, no, <laughs> uh, no. There was a lot. There was a lot to learn. Uh, a lot to learn because because uh, Shopify is very very dense, and there's a lot you can do with it. So it's it's almost like there's too many options. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, how do I do this one thing? And then you go Google it, and there's like 16 different apps you can install to do it. And it's like, all right. Thankfully, Mike has gone ahead of me, and he's already picked out stuff that works. So I just I would ask him, like, hey, how did you do this or that? Um, it was easier in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but with those crowd funds, the Kickstarter, Indiegogo, it, it's really easy. Those are more streamlined. So it's like, this is where you upload your image, and this is the size of the image should be and all of that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to customization, the Shopify is way better, way, way better. Because um, I can do can things do... like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could do bundles on Indiegogo, but, you, it, you know, there's more um, – there's a whole lot more I can do with it here um, because, you know, I get to have that little thing on that says sale like it, that there's that, Oh, that, that FOMO that might pop up in people's uh, in the back of their mind when they see that, like, Oh, well, I mean, but at some point it's going to be $85 and that's true. That bundle some point will be $85. So yeah, get it while you can at that price because after the campaign is over then you know we'll probably just taking the sale prices off mm -hmm. but uh but yeah uh, i think my favorite thing is just being able to shop because I've, yeah. I've got a ton of custom orders you know i had somebody that uh, just today they bought one cover a record and a t-shirt and i didn't have to go into indiegogo and make that a thing or deal with a bunch of configurations and make sure add-ons were turned on for every product and all of that it's just right. there like i just it's just called add-ons it's just a cart i just yeah it's just a cart i just happen to make these the quote-unquote add-ons but if you go to the catalog every product we have is in the catalog so right. yeah it's all about the the forward-facing storefront that you want to present to the to the customer so and whoever got the the a cover the vinyl and the shirt you know you just you might you had to just go a little bit over and just right there <laughs> <laughs> get those free signatures it's free <laughs> yeah but anyway hey thanks for joining us let's see i'm gonna throw on my closing video this better be the right video yeah that's the right video and bring the audio down on that a little bit i appreciate your time eric thanks for thanks for uh you know lowering yourself to join us here <laughs> anytime you need me to lower lower myself so i can hang out with uh, the likes of sumo thori and mo biggs i'm here for it cool and arrogant ape we appreciate you and yes felix and arrogant and ape and felix and all of you of course well <laughs> no, my i appreciate you having me on my outro is a little bit long um it, i just never edited it down the way i planned originally <laughs> but um i'm just going to take us out so how do we do this right. where are we